Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, man, Lord. I was getting fucked all day today. Y'all hear me? Let's get in here. I, I ran into uh, down power lines. You can't hear me? Oh, Pastor must have turned it on. Oh, can you turn that up a little bit? Um, I ran into down power lines and was traffic uh -huh. killed. I had to get rerouted on my route. And construction was happening everywhere. Yeah. And it was traffic build up. I'm sitting there like, Lord, I got to get get here and you know, put some fine touches on my little message and everything. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and I couldn't even shave none of that. You know, I just came in here. <laughs> right? you know, and then the last thing, I got stopped by a train. This train seemed like it took forever. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get my uh, my friend Quincy and um, yeah. I got stuff on the express. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it must be, devil don't want me yeah, to say what that's I what it is, say, or what God has to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I, I, I appreciate it, though. So I didn't allow it to disturb my spirit. I said, Lord, I thank you yeah. for the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate yeah. it because yeah. it's, it's, it's something. But the, the title of the message is uh, The Dangers of Having an Unforgiving Spirit, Part 2. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do a recap of what we discussed. Uh, what we discussed was um, unforgiveness and um, and um, trust. A lot of times people com um, combine the two. They believe when you forgive somebody, you have to trust them. And trust and forgiveness are two separate things. You know, uh, forgiveness is for you. Trust is earned. It's not given. And the Bible tells us not to trust nobody but God. Amen. You know, so this is what came out of that. We we even show what God said. I don't even trust the saints, <laughs> right? Right. We read the scripture about that, and we talked about uh, what forgive uh, forgiveness was, and the, the definition of forgiveness was to set free, to let go, to dismiss, to be a part. Uh, basically, just let it go. Oh, oh, okay. Just basically, just let it go, right? And that's what. Um, Unforgiveness, uh, the definition for unforgiveness was just basically release, and that releasing is for you, mm -hmm. not the individual. That's to free you so you can grow, mm -hmm. right? Then we talked about what unforgiveness was, and we, we read a definition. I'm going to read that definition again in your hearing. Unforgiveness is the state of emotional and mental distress that results from a delayed response in forgiving an offender. And what I what came out of that that quote was a lot of us is living in the delay. We live it in a delay where mental uh, stress, mental stress, and emotional and torment is happening. All right. You know, so torment is happening because what happened to you is constantly being played over and over and over and over and over again, All right. and you're constantly being attacked by the mental distress. And this is where God turned you over to the torturous and the tormented because you did not let go what you was holding on to, which was unforgiveness. You didn't allow, you didn't forgive somebody. So God has no choice but to turn you over to the tor to, to the tormentors. Ain't that what we read in the Mark? I think it was Matthews 18, 34 and 35. Somebody get that for me. I just want to read that in your hand. Matthews 18, 34, 35. You got the key? I got you. Got you. I come get you, bro. All right, let's read that so we can see. 18. What? 18, what is it? 18, 34, 35. You got it? 18, 34, 35. It said, and, and oh. his Lord was wroth. And his Lord was wroth. Go ahead. And his Lord was wroth mm -hmm. and delivered him to the tormentors. And delivered him to the tormentors. Keep going. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Read 35. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. From the heart. God has no choice. There's nothing God can do with you when you're holding on to unforgiveness. There's nothing he can do. So he has no choice but to deliver you over to the torments. Mm -hmm. This is where mental distress, this is where you're living in a delay because it's a delayed response to forgiving somebody. Right. And you stay in that delay. Some people stay in that delay for years. Mm -hmm. 
and never come out. Never come out. Because they're constantly being tormented and they're constantly being uh, plagued by the hurt. Mm -hmm. And they can't find a way to get out of the pain of the hurt or what the offense that happened to them. So what they do, they become bitter. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to finish reading up this definition, right? It says, it is characterized by indignation. Indignation means that somebody done you wrong. Right? And that was what consistently fused your, uh, your uh, unforgiveness. Because you feel they've done you wrong, so you can't get over the wrong that they've done to you. Mm -hmm. So you can't let it go, so you hold on to it. So after that happens, it turns into bitterness mm -hmm. and a demand for punishment and restitution. That's right. mm -hmm. You, you want to see something hurtful happen to this individual. That's right. That's good stuff. That's right, Dave. Huh? That's right. You demand it. Demand it. Wow. Talk to him, Lord. Talk to him. You demand that that type of punishment to come upon somebody. Bodily harm. Whether it's by you or somebody else. Mm -hmm. You can set them up, and this is where now you're entering into other types of sin. You know what I'm saying? Because you're being a, a tail bearer, about, you know, backbiter, all this stuff, because you are fueled from unforgiveness and bitterness sets in, and you demand punishment and restitution. Unforgiveness creates a domino effect uh, that affects every impact, it, it negatively impacts every part of us, including our emotions, our thoughts, our behavior, our body, our spirit, and our relationships. All right. And we went into what all that looked like. You know, our emotions, this is why it says you, you live in emotional and mental distress. Your, the, your actions, that, that emotion, you're going to always make emotional response to everything. Mm -hmm. And I was always taught from Bishop Cohen, if you make an emotional response, you always make the wrong one. If you move on your emotions, yeah. you're always making the bad decisions. Right. Because it's... It's not logic. It's not looking at the bigger picture. Sure. All right now. You know what I'm saying? You don't, sure. you don't understand it from their point of view. It's just how you feel. That's yeah. right now. And you're going to respond off of just how you feel. That's okay. good. And it's going to always be wrong. Okay, now. Okay. Uh, okay. Always wrong. So watch this. Watch this. So it, it, emotions, your thoughts, you're thinking about wicked things, you're thinking about negative things, mm -hmm. the, what you can do to this person, how can you get even? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right? We all been there. No, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie. I've been there. Uh, I, I was thinking good and crisp. I can get back at somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm being real. But that was the wrong spirit. Well, we got a, a phrase here that's coined by myself, which is your spirit ain't right. <laughs> My spirit wasn't right. Huh? So, uh, baby. <laughs> Right? It says negatively impacts every part of us, our emotions, our thoughts, your behavior. You become so mean and bitter. Huh? Can't nobody talk to you? You aggressive? Huh? Very angry. Very angry. You not happy at all. You just Never. angry. Never. Pastor, I know you want to say something. Go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just going to piggyback. It Go ahead. the disobedience to it. That's it. That's what it leads to. That's it. It's separation. It's, all this is separating you from, from God. Yes, it does. It's separating you from God because God can't forgive you mm -hmm. if you can't forgive somebody else. Yeah, that's it. If you holding on, God, can, he cannot lie. His word is his word. He said, word. he said, until you forgive your brothers of their trespasses, yes, I can't forgive you mm -hmm. of yours. Amen. It stays at your feet. Yes, it does. And a lot of us have heavy feet and old bones and all kinds of stuff. That's good. Thing. That's right, good. Now. right? Because we won't let stuff go. True. Right? Body, spirit. We talked about the body and the spirit, which is the old bones, right? The tax of the body. You get get sickness that nobody knows about. You know, and doctor don't even know what you have. They just try to test you on different multiple things, try to figure out what's going on with you. They'll come up with a weird name for your disease or your, your sickness. You got ribo flat. Bad case of ribble flat. Right? <laughs> That's something nobody never heard of. Like, what? What? I gotta go study on this ribble flat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the stuff like that that they uh they would just say, you'd be like, man, I don't even know what this is. But it comes from unforgiveness. Yeah. Unforgiveness. 
You'll, uh, and in your relationships, it affects your marriage. Yeah. It affects your friendships with people. Yeah. Because you can't let stuff go. I, I say this. We don't know how to be friends and, and just be around each other anymore. Everything is an issue. Yeah. And all everybody is bitter. Yeah. Everything is issue. You can't even say, hey man, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why you ask, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they come aggressive back at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why you ask? Well, I just built a whole wall up right there. I'm like, man, I'm just trying to show you a little love, brother. Yeah. Nah, that ain't love, brother. You know, I don't, I don't like people. Yeah. <laughs> they will flat out tell you, I don't like being around people. Yeah. That's a bitter person. Yes. Yeah. You're going to get strength by yourself. That's true. A person that isolates themselves, I can tell you, that's a person that's tormented. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they, they, they don't get strength from nowhere. We get strength from each other. Yes, God right. calls us sheep for a reason. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. We only have a shepherd to lead us to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the fastest the shepherd in this house. But we are the sheep. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. So what we do, we follow the shepherd. Mm -hmm. yeah. We get strength from the herd. Our defense is together. True. Satan don't attack us when we all together. Yeah. That's our defense mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. You can leave a whole herd of sheep, yeah. Yeah. and a wolf gonna dance around him until one does. Yeah, to one yeah. Does he out. wait for the one. He wait for one to struggle by himself, yeah. and he gonna feast real good on it. That's what he gets. All right now. All right now. Just because you left the pack. That's true. And too many of us is leaving the pack. There you go, D. That's good. Leaving the pack. Right? We, you, we get struck here. So let's finish out this definition. So with unforgiveness, time does not heal all wounds and facts. Time further worsens it and, and inflicts emotional pain. Unforgiveness is like carrying around a huge weight. The longer you carry a grudge, the heavier the burden becomes. Oh, yeah. it, in, 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 in the absence of a timely response, the root of unforgiveness only grows deeper. You got to let this stuff go fast. That's true. All right now. You know what I'm saying? But the fact, the, the fact that you hold on to it, it is keep bringing you down and bringing you down and bringing you down. Mm -hmm. And you get more me meaner, angrier. You're thinking of wicked things consistently, and you can't figure out why. Like, why am my mind going here? It's because you ain't let something go. You got to find the root. And after so many years, you forget what made you that bitter. Yeah, you just true. move on. That's true. And then you compounding stuff on top of the, the root cause yeah. of whatever it was. That's true. And sometimes it didn't even have nothing to do with you. It had something to do with somebody you love. And you mad about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that, that's it only grows deeper. It says some feeding on unforgiveness is toxic. Right? We talked about how uh forgiveness uh attacks your body, and we said it was five principles for forgiveness. Principle number one was recognize that you need forgiveness. I think sometimes we don't forget. We're going to hurt somebody eventually. Mm -hmm. And we need forgiveness. So it's best to forgive for you can be forgiven in the future. Because at some point, you ain't going to be on that side of things. You're going to be hurting somebody. That's right. yeah. We all on the same boat. Everybody in here hurts somebody. Amen. At one point in time in your life. That's true. You need forgiveness as well. And we talked about that in um, the story we just read where, where God said he, he'll charge it to you, he'll turn you over to the tormentors and, and all that little stuff because you won't let something go. You won't forgive a person, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, number two in these five principles was God has a greater purpose in your hurt. Come on. And we use Daniel as an example of that. And Daniel went through hell and back. He really did. His brother sold him. I don't think nobody gonna go through it. They tried to kill him. Joseph. 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 I'm sorry, Joseph. 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 They sold him. His brothers tried to kill him. Right? They. Uh, he, he was sold into slavery. He spent years in prison. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't see his family in years. He was isolated from his father. He had a lot of stuff going on. And when he finally saw them, he told them, "You didn't send me here for God." He understood that all things work together for his good. God sent him there, what? To be a, uh, to preserve their life. That's what he said. To preserve life by a great deliverer is what he told him. He said, you did not send me here. God sent me here to preserve your life by a great deliverance. That's how you let stuff go. 
He didn't hold on to it. He welcomed his brothers back and loved them after all what they don't did to him. Mm -hmm. And this is a reflection of how we ought to be uh, as children of God because God wants us to reflect him and God is that way. Right. We're going to find that out uh, later on, right? Uh, God is responsible for vengeance, not you. Right? God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's not for you to go and get on yourself and just try to bring some type of vengeance on somebody. Huh? Turn them over to God and let God deal with it. Amen. Sometimes we don't trust God to deal with it. But if you just let it go and let God have it, like, Lord, you know they're doing me wrong. Lord, just, I'm going to leave it in your hands. I'm going to still love them, but I'm going to leave it in your hands. I'm turning them over. I'm, I'm sick of it. Yes. God will start bringing some type of judgment. You'll see them going through hell and back. But you got to get out the way. Yeah. Because once you step in the way, God said, no, okay, you stepping in my, my spot now. Yep. I'm going to step out the way. Mm -hmm. And what nine times out of ten was supposed to happen to them wind up happening to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Vengeance is belong to God. Right. Here's the fourth one. The, uh, the real offense is against God and not you. The real offense is against God and that's not good. you. And this is what a lot of us we get it wrong. We think that they it's the God that's in you that they're attacking. Right. Mm -hmm. You ever think somebody getting mad at you? It's not because they're mad at you. They're mad because of what you stand on and who you represent. That's right. That's right. It ain't always about you. Mm -hmm. We take things so personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, always, I told y'all, what came out of this was everything is always spiritual. Nothing is never personal. That's right. It's always spiritual. It's, always spiritual. it's never yeah. personal. You know what I'm saying? And God is taking you, just like with Joseph. He didn't think that that was spiritual, but it became spiritual for him. Because he was delivering his brothers and his family all right. by great deliverance. All right. right? He went through all that hell and back for something spiritual to happen that God was using him for. Mm -hmm. All right? All so right. we're going we gonna to keep running through these. I just want to touch on them a little bit. That's all. Uh, uh, unforgiveness opens us up the door for satanic attacks. Come on. A lot of us don't realize we give an ammunition to Satan. <laughs> huh? Yes, sir. He got something to always pick at you to get you all out your spirit. Mm -hmm. Now you can be doing good for God. He'll say, Yeah, remember that brother did that to you? You know your that spirit ain't right. That is so huh? <laughs> Your spirit ain't right. You was upset. Now you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you thinking about everything that don't happen, and now you talking back with agreeing with saying, "Yeah, you're right. You did do that." All the right, vengeance right. come right back. I mean, it's bigger than you. Right. Uh -oh. You're like, dang, this is a whole face shit. That's real quick. That's good. That's good. You know what I'm saying? And this is what Satan does. He has. He gained an advantage. Yeah. He got something to always pick at you at because yeah, you won't let something go. And all he asks you to do is, let, all God is telling you, let it go for you can grow. Amen. All this is for you can grow spiritually. Amen. It's not to hurt you. Amen. It's to help you. God wants you to, before we leave out of here, we got to be like him. Amen. Amen. When we meet him in the, in the sky. So we're going to see. How that is, I don't want to jump ahead. We're going to see how that, how, that, how that goes, right? So I want to I want to touch on this one because I didn't get to go into it real deep. I had to read it and everything like that, but I want to go back into it. Mm -hmm. now, unforgiveness is a sin, and it will separate you from God. Yes, it will. I, I don't think we realize how that separation is very critical. It will cause you, when you have unforgiveness in your heart against anybody, are you in it? In it that unforgiveness turns into bitterness, mm -hmm. and bitterness and unforgiveness play off each other. It, it's like a, a ceiling to keep you in a certain attitude and a certain uh, behavior, and nothing satisfies. I don't care. You could be the most powerful, anointedest person in God. You will forget all about your your spiritual anointing. Where God had you at, you will distance yourself from God and come back with unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart and you're going around to try to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you don't know how to process that hurt and it separates you from God. Mm -hmm. You forgot all what God made you to be. We're going to find a, it's a brother in the Bible that was so anointed. He had a powerful gift. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. 
We, we read about it. He was, he was David's counselor. This is who David came and got counsel from, mm -hmm. right? He, 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 he gave him good counsel. Let's read about what his gift was. Let's go to 2 Samuel 16 and 23. 2 Samuel 16 and 23. Oh, yeah. Let's get there. 2 Samuel 16 and 23. 16, verse 23 is the last verse. You got you? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. And the council of Ahithophel. Thank Ahithophel. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ahithophel, mm -hmm. which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. My God. Go keep going. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both of David and with Absalom. Now listen, his gift was when he counseled you, it was like he was talking to God. Come on with it. Listen to it. You hear me? He had, he had a gift that when he spoke, it was like God was talking to you. Man, I want that gift. You hear me? Right. Forget all this prophecy and all this other little stuff. Yeah, give me that I want when, when I speak, it's yeah. like God talking right out of me. You get what I'm saying? That's the oracles of God. Meaning that it was, it, it's like God is just really speaking right out of him. Yeah. They was talking to God when talking to him. Mm. He was that anointed. You know how in tune with God you got to be? How, uh, how living up to that standard of God? You got to be really sold out for God. Amen. To be that anointed to where he speaks is like God talking. All yes. right. All right. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's a powerful gift. But, you know, we look for the other little things like privacy and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, laying on the hands and yeah. all this other little stuff and <laughs> pocket shit and all this other weird stuff. <laughs> Give me that one. Right. <laughs> uh, this is where we look. I, I want that gift. I want to be that in tune with that. Right there. <laughs> right? But let's look at what happened. Just a chapter over. Just a chapter over. Turn a chapter over to verse 17 and 23. Let's look what happened to him. Just a chapter over. That's, right. That's like saying a few days. Mm. It's like a few days later. It happens. Watch this. And when Ahithophel, 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 mm -hmm. saw that his counsel was not followed, mm -hmm. he saddled his ass and arose mm -hmm. and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order. Mm -hmm. And hanged himself, he hung himself. Oh, and died. And died. Mm -hmm. Was buried in this. Sepulchre mm -hmm. of his father. Mm -hmm. Now look, he went from being so anointed Come on, sir. to killing himself. Killing himself. Wow. Wow. Watch How that. you go from here to here in just a chapter over? That's like a few days. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. He got a root of bitterness in him. He, and what happened? Y'all want to know what happened to him? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what happened to him. All right, I'm going to tell you what happened to him. All right? So we all know the story. Let's go there, though. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5, and then verse 27. Let's go there. I want you to see what happened. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5. And it came to pass. Mm hmm after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, yep. that David sent Joab mm -hmm. and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. Uh -huh. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. David stayed home. Y'all know the story, right? Yeah. This is where David looked over and he Bathsheba. saw Bathsheba, mm -hmm. right? But I want you to pay close attention to verse 3. three. Drop down to 3 for me real quick. I'm going to this real quick. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Mm -hmm. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam? The daughter of Eliam. The wife of Uriah the uh, Hittite. The Hittite. Eliam, right? Mm -hmm. I'll keep that name. That's her father, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 23 and 34. Let's find out who she is to uh, Ahithophel. That's his granddaughter. 23 and 34. That's his granddaughter. 
Ile, Ile Fili. I know I'm tearing Ile Ile name up. Yeah, I'll do it. The son the of. The son of. Ah. Uh, uh, second Samuel uh, 23, 34. Son of. Uh, uh, Hishabah. Okay, we're going to go with that. Uh, Hishabah. <laughs> the That's son good. of the Mahu. Ma 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 what are these words? Uh -huh. Real. Real. Elium, right? Elium. The Elium. son of Ahithophel. The son of Ahithophel. There it is. Mm -hmm. So you see, that was his granddaughter. <laughs> so he was giving counsel to David. He he was uh, doing all this stuff spiritually for David. All right. And David caused his grandbaby to be an adulteress. Mm -hmm. And he killed his son-in-law. Yep. And this fueled his rage. And he sought to kill David. Mm. And he went and he had a, he devised a plan. If that plan would have carried out, mm -hmm. David would have been out of here. Yeah. But for some reason, God allowed Ashelon to believe another man's That's right. word. That's right. That's right. So when he found out his words was not being honored, That's right. That's right. he realized he wasn't where he was in God anymore. So he went home and killed himself. He died twice that day. He died when he separated and he got bitterness in his heart. He died spiritually that way because it separated him from God. And then he died naturally. And it's always a suicidal attack that Satan brings to everybody that holds on to the bitterness. He puts you at home by yourself. That's true, though. You get what I'm saying? And all this is playing over. And then he'll slide it in there. Why don't you just slip your wrist? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and end it and die. Don't nobody care about you. That's yeah. what he says to him. This is what he did to him. He went from being so anointed mm -hmm. to killing himself. Mm, that's good, we got to get rid of this unforgiveness. It's killing you. Yes, it is. It's good, D. It's killing us. That we can't love each other. We don't even know what love is. If you look at how the world is today, they don't even know what love is. They think it's intangible things. Buy me this. Buy me that. Yeah. Oh, she bought me this. She did this for yeah. me. You did all that. It's in things yeah. and not in people. Amen. It's in so much tangible stuff that don't have no value to it. Amen. What's value is what's in front of you. What's value is what you've been blessed with. If you've been blessed with a husband or a wife or some type of friendship that means something to you, stay in it. Amen. That's good. I'm staying. That's good. All right now. All right now. That's good. Walk on down the street now. Walk Don't let down. it kill you. Amen. Teach it then. This is what happened to a hit the field. He he was he he was so angry and just. He couldn't get it off. He couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't make David, he couldn't punish David. He was demanding, you know, something punishment to happen to David. He was demanding it. He wanted to do it himself. He even told uh, Absalom, I'll bring, uh, I'll bring you to you, mm -hmm. dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people will come and worship you. That's right. Mm -hmm. He plotted the whole thing. He plotted the whole thing. Yes, and did. if it would have been carried out, David was out of here. Mm -hmm. But David prayed and said, Lord, don't let this, whatever he got planned, come to pass, please. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why David, man, David knew. He was like, because he knew the anointing that man had on him. He knew it. And that it was the fear of that anointing. But when you separate from God, you don't have that same effect no more. That's true. You don't have that same effect no more. You know what I'm saying? And then what we need to realize, and you know, and some of us, you got to realize that actions, their actions is not worth damaging your relationship with God. That's Amen. good. Man. That's true. People's actions against Amen. you is not worth damaging That's your true. relationship with God. Amen. I'm sorry, it's just not. Amen. But we allow people to separate us from God. This is what happened to a, a hypocrite. He allowed the, fit, the effects of that to separate him from something he was connected to that was beautifully connected to. Wow. He was in perfection. 
God talk out of you like that and people can come to you for wise counsel and it's like God talking to them. You know how many lives was changed from him just speaking to them? And Satan always know, uh, attack those that have a, a, a calling on their life. Amen. Right. Mm. Yes, he does. Mm. Yes, he does. You got a great calling on your life, and, and, and you working in your ministry, and all of a sudden, you get this root of bitterness and um, stuff in you. You go out, and you back off from God. That's right. Mm. Come you on. right out the, back out the street. Teach us something. My God. Forgot all about what God called you to be. Called you to be. Come on. You're teaching. Help us, Lord. All because you can't let something go. Get it off of you. I don't care what y'all have to do. Get it out your spirit. Huh? If you gotta fast until you tired of fast. Get that out of you. I don't care. If you gotta come and lay here on an altar, I just come on here and just lay here. Lord, please get that. Babe, God gonna remove it. I promise you he's gonna remove it. But this is the stuff that's in our meat closet. Amen. That God wants to get out. He can't make us into his image because we say it, say it. We hold on to too much stuff. That's right. And it's killing us. Mm -hmm. You would die with that spirit in you. That's true. Thinking you're going on your way up to Zion. Mm -hmm. Not so. Not so. Not so. You know, so, and then another thing we got to realize also is that God is the ultimate judge. Mm -hmm. Some of us, you know what I'm saying, when somebody hurts us, we get so angry that we act as if we are God. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You act as if we're God. As somebody don't broke one of your commandments. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> don't broke one of your, your little commandments. You know, you act and put yourself in God's stead, and it's like you can't forgive them for nothing they don't do. It's the worst thing that ever happened. Right? But when you hurt somebody, I'll forgive you. I totally different like story. That, you know? totally different Just forgive me. Yeah. You want forgiveness? Are you making up something that's around about forgiveness? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's you just talking all around it like, well, you know, you know I love you, little kid, you know, girl. Like, all I was trying to do was, you know, I, see, you made me mad, and you, you know, and all this, there's a whole lot of extras. I'm like, brother, I'm so sorry. I don't want to hear all that. That is the truth. Stepped on my shoe, and, you know, these were some fresh J's, and you know, all this looks right. 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 And, and now you're mad and you know you did something foolish and you want forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But you forget all about your wanting forgiveness. That is very when somebody true. do something to you. That, is very that true. goes out the window. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Right. It's nothing but fire spitting out your mouth after that. Huh? Because you you have you think you the judge. Mm -hmm. You're not the judge. Right. God is the judge. Right. And God is gonna, gonna get them. For doing you with how they did you. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. That's true. If you just back off and allow God to be God. That's right. I, I tell you, I, I don't worry about nothing no more. I, after I everything I went through, man, the, the, the hell I went through when I was in my wilderness and things that I had to fight to get out of, I don't I don't doubt nothing of God. Anymore. Amen. He, he said in his word, I believe it. I don't doubt it anymore. I used to sit here and like, Lord, just, just let me say this. No, don't say nothing. You know, because I, I, I can come back real slick. I'm very yes, crafty is. with what I say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, can, I can be that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm crafty. Yeah. We, we, my wife know. Quincy know. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. Very crafty. I said you don't even know I just I just, just said something you know mean to you. You be sitting there like huh? you're laughing. Yeah, he's like, wait, did he just? <laughs> yeah, that way. <laughs> yeah, I just move on. I don't say I don't mean to. I don't you know. I just say it real quick and move on. But this is the stuff that God has had to deal with me on. He had to deal with me about how I am. See, I don't like you doing that. Yes. I don't. Yes, 
He said, I want you to resemble me at all times. He all said, that time. don't help nobody when you do it. Because that's being tit for tat. Yeah. And so many of us is being tit that's for so tat. Yes, Doing are. evil for yes. evil. That is right. Yes, we are. We being that much in there, right? Yes, so let's, uh, let's look, go back into this, this, this sin will separate you from God, right? Let's go to Isaiah 59, mm -hmm. 1 through 4. Isaiah 59, mm -hmm. 1 through 4. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. Well, that he cannot say. Uh huh. No. Neither his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Stop right there. Listen, God's hand ain't short. I I don't see God with alligator arms. Have y'all ever seen God with alligator arms? <laughs> uh, he ain't up here with gator, gator hands like this. He ain't like this. His hands ain't that short. Right? He, he can reach you. If he wants to reach you, he can get to you. His arms is long, right? And his his ears work. The last time I checked, his ears work, right? He do hear you, right? I'm, I'm making it to where it can stick, right? He ain't got gator arms, so a lot of us fear that he don't hear me, he ain't going to do this, and think his arms is this short, that he can't fix your issue. And he's telling you right here, he said, the Lord's hands is not shortened, uh, that it cannot save. It's going to come and deliver you. Amen. Neither his ears heavy that he cannot hear you. He hears you. That's true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But go ahead. Watch this. Watch this separation, though. He's but going to tell you what separates you from. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Mm. Iniquities have separated you from between you and your God. Mm. Holding on to things yeah. have separated you. Because we, we found out that holding on to unforgiveness is a sin. Yes, it is. It's a sin. And you holding on to it. So now, when when you need God, he's sitting there and he got these alligators. <laughs> huh? Why well, she gonna tell you? You're gonna get them gator arms. Watch this. And your sins have separated you from it says your, your sin, uh, your, your but your iniquities have what? Have separated between you and your God. You and your God, and what else? And your sins have hid his face from you. He hid from you. That he will not hear. He's not gonna hear. Right. He's not going to hear until you turn around and come back and say, I forgive them for what they've done. Yeah. And the mean it from the heart. That's true. It has to be from the heart. Amen. It can't be, you know, just you just saying it all with me. I forgive mm -hmm. you. You can hear the bigger than that. I forgive you. <laughs> right? Got to be from the heart. Amen. You got you to gotta really mean it. That's right. And then God will forgive you. He will start hearing you again. Right? Let's keep going. For your hands have defiled with blood, mm. and your fingers with iniquity. Uh -huh. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Uh -huh. Some of us been doing a little too much. Keep going. None of us. None call uh -huh. for justice, nor any plea for truth. Uh -huh. They trust in vanity. Trust in deep lies. They conceive men. And that vanity right there means empty words. Keep going. They trust in just. People saying empty things to them, they don't have no substance, right? right? You, you would trust uh, not someone that's of God, that's spiritual. You won't listen to that that voice to help you come out of what you're in. Yeah. Uh, somebody telling you to let go something. Mm -hmm. You won't hear them. You'll listen to empty words to tell you, to keep on. Yeah, they wrong. Mm -hmm. Huh? If it was me, I'd do this to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's constantly putting yeah. this, this doubt and hate in you. You being programmed. There you go. This world is programming everybody. Oh, it's in front of your face all day long. While you walking down the street, while you walking down the street, you got me. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, listen. Walking, walking. Listen. We catch on to worldly things and sinful things yes. way yes. faster than we do spiritual. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Way faster. Amen. Amen. Right? I see a difference in generation here, right? Totally. My generation is here, yeah. right? We had a, a, a commercial, right? <laughs> that commercial was this. <laughs> Mother Loney has the first name. What is it? B-O-L-O-N-E-Y. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Right? Now, see how long ago that was? Now, yeah. listen, watch this. What? Another generation. Oh, who lives in the pineapple under the sea? <laughs> Like nothing. It's like it's in there. Yeah, that's right. Why ain't the oh, word in there like that? <laughs> we hide things in the wrong right. pot. Right. right? The word ain't in there like that. But look, yeah, like that. I, I can get y'all real quick with the same thing, right? And this is how a good representation of how we are with God and God's word. Because we have selective hearing. That's yeah. so true. Whatever matters to us is what we can retain. Yeah. What don't matter is won't come back up. That's good. So watch this. The same SpongeBob song. Oh, who lives in the pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob Square Band. What's the next line? Orange and orange and yellow. Nope. Yellow. <laughs> he almost right. He almost right. But you see how a lot of people did not know. It's yellow and chorus and porous is he. It's not orange. <laughs> But they sit and they listen to thousands of songs of SpongeBob. All right. And don't and cannot retain that at all. Yep. all right. That lets you know we have selective hearing. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ask any kid yeah. that what I just did, I guarantee you they can't sit there and say it. Yeah. And they sit and watch a thousand episodes of SpongeBob. And we true. come in here, we in we in service after service after service after service, so. hearing the preacher preach, 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 preach. And we're not retaining it. That's good. Because we're not putting the word in the right pocket. Amen. Yeah, so. That's good stuff right yeah, there. The word can so. come up when you need it. That's good. When you're in this battle of yeah. unforgiveness and things of this nature, you need the word to spring forth and talk out of you. That's good. All right. Just like you just did with the worldly things. Amen. Amen. You got something passing? I know you do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good because I'll let you speak to there you. was a slight, a little experiment. We did, not intentionally, but unintentionally mm. today. Mm. Watch this. <laughs> we sent out two flyers. Uh -huh. yeah. One was for the That's healing true. and deliverance revival. Right. Mm -hmm. That was casually received. Nobody pushed it. Nobody mm -hmm. sent out the skating party. Uh -huh. About really? 10 other people caught sure it. Wow. I said, sure I said this is where we at. This is where we at. This is where we at. Yeah, this is really where we at. Yeah. The hill and the hill, nobody caught it. Nobody, nobody said nothing about it. Monday. Mm -hmm. Very few yep. people. That's right. Send out that skate. It was like, wow. Yep. It just took off. We have to retain things that's more worldly it, it took than off. more spiritual. And we retain it so fast. Yeah. And, and it sticks forever. Yeah. It sticks forever. Yes. It don't go nowhere. If somebody remind you of it, pop right up, right in there. But if I sit here and quote a scripture, you be like, "Oh, is that in the book of uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta be, gotta be the uh, Psalms or something?" No, that's not a psalm. I'm talking something I want. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right. Uh, gotta be the Psalms. I believe it's Psalms. <laughs> 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 you get what I'm saying? It's crazy. <laughs> Because we don't, we don't retain it. We're not hiding God's word in the right pocket. It's, it's a right, that right pocket is where you hide what that worldly thing was, right? right. And that's in your heart. There you go. Right? You get it in a, in a place, in your heart. You know why it was easy for you to retain that versus something spiritual? It's because you freely receive what the world has to offer. Yeah. We always have some type of rebellion or some type of, uh, of distance or doubt when yeah. God tells us something. There you go. Talk to him now. It's Talk some type of doubt. So we don't freely receive God's word. Yeah. That's right. If you freely receive it, it'd be hidden in the right spot. Amen. And when you go through something, it'll speak up and it'll come about in you. Just like it did Jesus. That's right. Yes. Right he gave us a, a, a perfect example of how that looks. That's right. When Satan tipped him when he was in his wilderness, the word spoke out for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was hidden in the right spot. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. it's all going to go. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't got off a little bit. It's all right. <laughs> you walk, you walk, okay. you walk. Let's get on back. Let's get on back to the sin separate you from God. Right? Right? This is unforgiveness. Sin will separate you from God. I'm going to read this real quick. It says, unforgiveness affects your spirit and your soul. Mm -hmm. Hinders your spiritual growth and fruitfulness. 
you can't nobody eat off of you. It hinders you from growing spiritually. Some of us are so spiritually bound that we don't realize that what is holding us down there and it's unforgiveness. Come on, sir. You ain't letting something go. Yeah. Some type of hurt. If you look at people that don't left the church and don't don't went places and don't, they always talk about what hurting them. Yeah. Nothing what they loved about God is always what the people did. Yes, that's good. Not what God did, what the people did. That's right. And because they didn't let something go. Right. And it stuck, so it, what, it, 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 it uh, affected their spirit, their soul, and it hindered them from growing anymore. Mm -hmm. So what they do, when you can't grow, you die. Yes. That's all that happens. You can't grow, you die. You feel spiritually dry, stuck, or stalled in your spiritual life. Come on, sir. This is what happens. You will feel spiritually dry. You know, this, this, you don't feel God nowhere. It's just, it's just dry. Mm. You ever like a, a desert? You can see little, little tumbleweeds flying past. It's dry out there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in that type of spot. No. And that's where we are spiritually. We spiritually dry. No power there, no nothing. Right? We stuck, we stall in our spiritual life. Unforgiveness builds a wall between you and God. Fear replace imprisonment and uh, uh, fear replace peace and imprisonment replace freedom. You be imprisoned by what you're not letting go. All right. It keeps you down. Yeah. All right. You just become, and then when somebody got a foot on you or, or just constantly pressing on you or something bound you, naturally you get angry because you can't get, you don't realize why you can't let it off, get it off of you. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what it is. But let me tell you something. God is holding all of us accountable for what we hear when, when we come to church. Mm -hmm. You got to allow that to change you. That's right. You can't sit here and say, I just came to church. Nope. I'm here at church. I came, I did my godly thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The word that comes across is supposed to prick something. Amen. It's supposed to change you. Amen. It's supposed to hide it in the place. That's right. Amen. Amen. So you won't be spiritually dry, stuck, or stalled in your spiritual life. That's good. Right? Unforgiveness build a wall between you and God. We read that. You said you feel tormented by the injustice. We, we talked about that. That's where they're living in that delay. Mm -hmm. But God feels far away. It's like yeah. no matter what you do, you can't get close to God. Come on. Mm -hmm. He feels so far away. Mm -hmm. It's like you drifted so far out and you just in a, 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 a darkness and you can't find your way. And the darkness is so dark and so much hurt, you bumping into stuff and you hurting yourself. So all you feel is pain because it's so dark you can't see because the light is gone. When we go away from the light, we enter into darkness. And we wind up hurting ourselves. Teach me. That's good. Yes, sir. You feel uh, tormented by the injustice. God feels far away. You feel less sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You'll come in here and be. <laughs> Man, this TikTok is nice, man. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see this, man? You see this, man? I'm trying to get the word, bro. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. That's how you do that. Right. How do you get word in That's good. That's the wrong thing. TikTok. Spirit ain't right. <laughs> Right? You might feel angry with God. Yeah, right? you, this is always here. You feel angry with God. Why this happen to me? Yeah. You always let this happen to me. <laughs> right? And you blame God. You're angry with him. Right? Which may cause you to avoid or run away from him. All right. You avoid or run away from God. Especially you when go. you get angry with him. That's right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in his presence. Well, <laughs> So what do you say? We fall away. You avoid. We don't backslide, right? We fall away. Fall away. Right? 
So we, 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 we you, you're far away. <coughs> Next thing you know, you, we used to say you go to the move seat back, yeah, you back move seat. another seat back, yeah. then you go in the back, then you have to go. Yeah, that's what they say. Right, that's what they used to say, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you can tell when they fall on the way. They fall yeah, away just true. generally. It's yeah, like true. gradually. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not, yeah. not like a, a, a gun hole thing. Come on, right? sir. Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, that's good 2, stuff. That's good 10 stuff. and 11. I want to show you the reason why that happens is because we allow Satan to get advantage on us. That's good. that's good, sir. We allow Satan to get the advantage. Come on. And holding on to unforgiveness, he has an advantage on you. Something that he can constantly prick at. Constantly prick at. To get you out of pocket. Right? 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. It yep. says, to whom ye forgive. Whom you forgive. Anything I forgive also. I forgive them also. For if I forgave anything, mm -hmm. to whom I forgave it, for your sake, forgive. I it in the person of Christ. In the person of Christ, right? right. Keep yeah. going. Lest Satan should get an advantage. Yeah, he can get an advantage on us. Uh, we no. are not ignorant. Of We're not Christ. ignorant to what he's doing. <clears throat> it's in his word. It's been taught over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. we, we're not ignorant to it. But we still allow Satan to get an advantage on us. I'm going to tell you something. We're not in position to give him any type of ammunition. Right. I can't give him something, an advantage on me. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford that. You get what I'm saying? I, I lose too much because he's constantly picking at something that I can't let go. It's best to just do it, let it go for you can grow. It's for you. Forgiveness is for you. Trust is earned. People got to earn your trust. And that's being bit through consistency of living a certain way. Amen. You are showing a person that you have changed. You are showing them that you are consistent in that change. Amen. And you are consistently doing the same thing over and over and over again. Amen. You got to build that consistency. I can't, I can't trust you just sitting here saying, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. I don't trust that. I'm, okay, I'll forget that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can't trust that. Right. That's good. See. I have to see your actions. Right. I have to see if you really mean that you are sorry. That's right. That's right. right? That's right. And that's that's how you that's how you do it. That's why it gotta be from the heart. That's true. Amen. Right? Yeah, right. So this is this is what this is what happens to a lot of us. And you, you don't realize that God wants us a certain way. Yes. We gotta be made in his image. That's right. We gotta reflect him always. Let's look, let's look at some characteristics of God. Yes. And the reason why he tell you to forgive and let stuff go because he do it consistently for us. Yes. All, day. all day long he forgives us. Amen. We do something to transgress his law all the time. All, all the time. time. Amen. And make him angry all the time. Amen. But at some point he comes around and say, I still love you. That's right. That's true though. Amen. No matter what you do. That's good. Yeah. Let's go to Colossians 3, 8 through 17. Colossians 3, 8 through 17. Got it? That's up. But now ye also mm -hmm. put off all these. Put off these. Look, listen to what he's telling you to put off. Anger. Anger. Wrath. Wrath. Malice. Malice. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Look, uh, look, hold on. That's out of your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Folks cussing. <laughs> I mean, flowing with the words. <laughs> huh? It's coming clean like boom. I mean, no remorse. Because you're so angry and bitter. <laughs> I'm dead serious. People are this way. Uh, he telling you, you shouldn't have that in your mouth. Yes, sir. I mean, flowing. You hear me? How, how, how Bill Cosby said it filth flowing and flowing. <laughs> but you filth flowing and flowing. Huh? 
Oh, I remember when he said that, I cracked him laughing. No, that was Eddie Murphy. That was Eddie Murphy. Oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. All right, let's go. Read on. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Don't lie to each other. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with these. With that was how you used to be. Yeah. That's the old you. That's not you anymore. When you get got blood bought, you surrendered how you used to be to God. You sat here and said, Lord, I surrender. Amen. Whatever you want for my life, that's what I freely accept. Yes. And I want you to ch change me into the image of yourself. Yes. You submit to him. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But what happened, we want to pick up our old self. Yeah. Here we do. Huh? Go back to anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, huh? Flowing with the words. <laughs> and lying to each other. <laughs> that's your old deeds. <laughs> Keep reading. And have put on the new man. Put on a new man. Which is renewed in knowledge. In knowledge. After it's renewed in knowledge. And look, this is how God renews you. He renews you by giving you an understanding mm -hmm. of how you are and where you need to change. Mm -hmm. Once he gives you that understanding, That's good, it's your responsibility That's good. to now work on yourself. We forget mm -hmm. that we are not perfect. Amen. We're being made perfect. Made perfect. So that means every day you are in a consistent uh, checking yourself. You constantly evaluating how you are. Do I look like you, God? Mm -hmm. Is there something in me that's not like you? Show me yeah. so I can remove it. Yes. We don't do that no more. So we just come on in, and just wild, you know, whatever, and get on in here, right? So an old man in his knees, that's how you used to be. You know, and I struggled with how I used to be That's right. for years. That's right. This is how I can tell y'all this. I struggled for years how I used to be. Mm -hmm. And I was something else. You know what I'm saying? And God, little bit by little bit, start changing me. Little yeah. bit by little bit. Yeah. That's good, dude. Little bit by little bit. It ain't just like he just go in your meat closet and just rip everything out. No. Mm -hmm. He wants you to get an understanding of why he's taking each piece out. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the knowledge. That's good, dude. You're talking today. Right. That's real talking. He's today. taking each piece out. He's giving you an That's understanding. Good, he said, this is bad because it don't reflect me, yes, and so. it can negatively affects you this way. All right. You get what I'm saying? All right. It negatively affects you out. Affects you in multiple ways, and he starts showing you this. But if you stop working on yourself, and you think you arrived already. You're going to hold all this stuff in your, you're going to keep on all this stuff in your meat closet. Mm -hmm. And you're going to miss out. That's right. Because these are the any such things. These are the very any such things that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right? Thank you, Lord. He's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. These are the any such things. We're not, we're not, we're not, have not made heaven. None of us have. Teach thee. We have an opportunity to be perfected. Mm -hmm. Not that we're perfect, but we have an opportunity to be made perfection. Right? right? Keep reading. Mm -hmm. And have put on the new man, which mm -hmm. is renewed in knowledge after the image, image. of him. And look, it's after the image of him. You're going to start looking like him. Right. Keep going. That created him. That created him. Keep going. Where there is neither Greek no. nor Jew. Nobody is exempt. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you you Greek, Jew, mm -hmm. right? Circumcised, uncircumcised, right? Mm -hmm. Barbarian, right? Mm -hmm. so what is that? Samarian? What is that? Scythian, right? Bond, Bond free. But, huh? but Christ is all and, and, in all. And, and, and. He made us all. That's good. Sir. Nobody's exempt. Yeah. Nobody. Chosen or not chosen. That's you. True. Nobody's exempt. Nobody. Keep going. Put on therefore. As the elect of God, holy. And this is what He wants you to put on. Put on, therefore, the whole, the uh, the the elect of God. God is holy. Yes. He wants you to put on holiness, holiness. as a standard of living. Right. Keep going. Right. Put on the uh, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy holiness uh -huh. and beloved. Beloved. Bows of mercy. Bows of mercy mean you humble, right? Kindness. Uh huh. Humbleness. Humbleness. Meekness, uh -huh. long suffering, 
Uh huh. Forbearing one another. Forbearing one another. And yes, forgive. Sir. And look, he's telling you to forgive. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Constantly telling you to forgive. Oh, Let it go. Let it go. Did you know that's a commandment to, to forgive yes. somebody? Yes. That's a commandment. Yes. Yes. If you don't forgive, right. you 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 transgressing the law of God. Yes. That's it. It's a sin. Yes. Yes. Keep going. If any man oh, have a quarrel against any. If you got a quarrel argument. Even as Christ forgave you. If, as Christ forgave you. So also do you. You do, you do the same thing. God forgave you. You also forgive. Keep going. And above all these things. Watch this. Put on charity. Love. He wants you to put on love. Which, which is what? Bond, which is the bond of perfection. This is when you are per perfected. When you can love somebody in spite of. In spite of yeah. any. You are you are in total perfection. That's the bond of perfection. That's right. When you can love somebody in spite of That's right. what they did to you, That's right. That's right. you can still show them love. Can't right. say you had to trust them, yeah. but you got to forgive them. Because hmm? trust is what? Earned. Trust is earned. That's right. <laughs> trust is earned, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. You ain't say you got to do all that. Yeah. I'm just saying, because God told us not to trust no man. Man will let you down every time. You know what I'm saying? Man will let you down every time. But you still got to forgive him in love. You still have to show the love of God, and the love of God has to radiate through you. You can't activate that the way you think it trusts in something, something else. I don't want you to go in that spirit. Right. Right? <laughs> you know? Don't get me wrong. It's the standard that God wants us to have, and that's how it is. And love is the, the bond of perfection. Keep going. And let the peace of God mm -hmm. rule in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called mm -hmm. in one body. One body. And be ye thankful. Be thankful that you're in this body. Keep let going. The word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in. Listen. The word of Christ. This is the knowledge. It's the word that he's going to give you. Let it dwell in you. you Put it in that you right pocket. You got it. Let it get. Let it pit, put it in the right pocket, right? Right where you put that worldly stuff. Put the word of God right there. Replace it. Replace it. Yeah. Keep going. That's good, dude. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Admonishing one another. That's it. It's love. In songs and hymns mm -hmm. and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That's right. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do it all. Do all in the name mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks unto Him. Giving thanks to God and the Father. Uh -huh. By Him. By Him. Right. This is what we do. Words and deeds. We, what we say should have a season of God to it. It should have some type of grace, and it still has some form of judgment to it. You get what I'm saying? Right. Which is, is, is when you say it, it's not offensive. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I, on my job, um, it was a kid, a bunch of bad kids on the bus. The driver couldn't handle them. She yelling at them and screaming and everything like that. And I got up there and I, I yelled also. I said, y'all sit down. Everybody sit down. And she said, why didn't they listen to you and not me? I said, kids can sense yeah. when you care. That's yeah. true. It's a difference in your yell. Mm -hmm. When you yelling just to be yelling, mm -hmm. it sounds annoying. Yeah. It don't have no purpose to it. Right. It's not balanced. Mm -hmm. But when you yell for, with, with love intent, for they, they understand why you don't, you don't want them to hurt themselves, they're going to obey you. Yeah. you. You don't have to go all out of pocket. If y'all gonna do this, I'm going to do this. Get your mind up here. <laughs> all that crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I be looking like, boy, you, then you wonder why you're on the news getting get balls put on you. You wonder why. <laughs> right? I, you ain't saying it in the right tone, right? You want, you want to have that right amount of grace and, and balance, right? So let's, uh, let's go to uh, God's perfection. Let's go to uh, Psalms 80, 86 and 5. Psalms 86 and 5. I want us to see how God wants us to be. And this is how he is. Psalms 86 and 5. 
it reads, For thou, Lord, art good. Are good? Yes, he is. To forgive and ready and Come plenteous in mercy uh -huh. to all of them that call upon thee. Now listen, mine's read this way. It says, For God, for the for the Lord, for for thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy, and unto them. Uh, unto, the, unto all that calls upon thee. Listen, he is ready to forgive. Mm -hmm. God always stands in a place to ready to forgive you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's not always in a place of ready to forgive you. Well, you're going to feel my breath. Mm -hmm. I can take you out of here right now. Like, can you imagine God like us? Say that you know. I'll drop you dead right there. <laughs> One more word. He said one more time. Tell me. You getting on my ass now. God talk like that, man. We ain't gonna we ain't trying to come around nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? But he stands ready to forgive. This is his this is why he's telling you to forgive. Because he's always ready to forgive. We gotta be like him. Right? He stands ready all the time. Yes, he does. Amen. At all times. You got some fancy. You're right. Dave. This is the thing that most of us forget. <laughs> this is the thing most of us forget. Is forget. That God is always forgiving us. Mm -hmm. For things seen and unseen. Amen. He's forgiven us. He's forgiven us. And we forget that when we're dealing with other people. We, we, it, it, it's like it, I told you, we, we become God. They broke one of our commandments. <laughs> uh, uh, thou should never do me like this. <laughs> That's the commandment. Uh, but sometimes when you go through that, it ain't for you all the time. You know, like you read up there, it's for somebody else. It's for somebody else. Right? Let's go to uh, Mark 11 and 25. Mark 11, 25. You got a cue? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And when ye stand praying, mm -hmm. ye, if ye have aught against any. You got anything against somebody. That your is. Father also which is in heaven may forgive you. He's for telling them. How, how plain can God talk? That's plain as it gets. Very plain. How plain can God talk? He's saying, listen, you forgive them for I can forgive you. That's it. Period. I want you to forgive them. You don't want to, but I need you to for I can forgive you. He's saying it as plain as he can. We, we looking for God to come in a dream and talk to you and say, my child, let it go. <laughs> I'm being real. We looking for something like that, am I right? Something mystical. Just, he come down with a smoke the cloud and everything. Heaven's on. He wrote it in the clouds. Let it go. <laughs> and you looking at it like that. That's God. I know that's God. He came down and told me. He telling you right here. Let it go. He don't have to do all that. Talk to him. If he did all that anyway, you would run and be scared. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> still won't let it go. And you still won't let it go. <laughs> uh -huh. Read that. Read twenty six for me real quick. No problem. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. He's telling you as plain as he can. That's true. That's true. He's saying, forgive them, for I can forgive you. Listen, when you don't, when you hold on to unforgiveness, everything you do is still at your feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's still at your feet. You still held accountable for what you're doing. God didn't throw it in behind his back or as far as the east from the west. When it's that far, God don't remember it. Yeah. And who can find God's back? Nobody. Nobody. Do it. So if he throw it behind him, he don't even remember it no more. 
You can't find God's back. You want God to throw it to where he, he get amnesia. He's like, I don't remember that. I see blood right, right where you did something, but I don't know what that was. I don't remember it no more. Yeah. I covered it under the blood. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? He blotted it out. That's what David was asking. Blot out my transgression. Yeah. That blood, take it and smear it. That's what he said. He can't read it no more. He can't read it no more. Because when he see his blood, he see forgiveness. That's, that's right. No good. That's good. No good, dude. Amen. He don't remember it no more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We do. When we, yes, we do. This is when we live in torment because we don't forgive ourselves. That's true. That's right. There it is. Yeah. We don't forgive ourselves. So we still stay in torment. It goes that way, too, even against yourself. Ain't that crazy? You won't even forgive yourself. You get what I'm saying? And you stay in torment. Man, I did this. Yep. I did that. Yep. God ain't gonna love me. Mm -hmm. This ain't gonna, this, he ain't doing this for me. This is why all this, I get what I deserve. That's you start right. talking defeated. That's what, that's what that's right. Let's get, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Psalms 32 and 1. Psalms 32 and 1. Thirty-two, verse one. Go ahead. <clears throat> Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Listen, God said, "You are blessed mm -hmm. when I forgive you." Hallelujah. Blessed is he whose whose sin is forgiven. And whose sin is what? Covered. Covered. Wow. You blessed when that happened. When God forgives you. You bless. bless. Yeah. We think blessings is always money. Uh -uh. But blessings can be God forgiving you for something you did. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. 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 Right? We look at blessings all day. Money and I told you everything tangible. That's it. Nothing with substance in it. Get me mad. It's a blessing. God don't have to forgive us. That is so true. Amen. He don't have to. That's the truth. We think God is supposed to. Uh -huh. I'm going to go do this because God has to yeah. give me. That's His word point. says, no, you're doing it in the wrong spirit. Amen. Yeah. Right. He's going to say, no, nah, that's going to stay at your feet till your spirit get right. Yes, he will. He'll leave it right there. Mm. He'll keep rising. You bless when he do give you forgiveness. That's right. Mm -hmm. He don't have to do it. He don't have to. But it's a blessing that he does. Right. Amen. We think he's supposed to. He don't have to. Let's keep going. Proverbs 17 and 9. 9 and, yeah, 17 and 9. Proverbs 17 and 9. Proverbs 17 and 9. I'm right now. He says, uh, he that covet, covereth mm -hmm. a transgression mm -hmm. seeketh love. Seeketh love. But he that repeateth a matter. Separate very friend. Look at that. He's telling you plain as day. When, when you cover someone's transgressions, just like God covers us, huh? You seek in love. Mm -hmm. But when you, a person constantly repeats a matter, it separates everybody. You don't want to be around that person. That's what the Bible says. Right? And it's the same way with God. You keep doing stuff, God ain't gonna consistently be around you. No. He gonna say, oh. That's for me to exit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we exactly. talked about the this truth. a little bit too. You know, forgiveness is a point mm -hmm. where when it start causing division yeah. or confusion in the church, mm -hmm. Paul said, mark them. And he also told them you stay away from them. So there is a limit to a limit. Well, you said it. We have to turn them over to God. They turn them over to God. They got him. You you still love them when they yeah. want to come back. You know, you still love them. You don't hold them accountable for whatever because, like he says, uh, he that covers transgression seeks love. Mm -hmm. right. We want that love from God. We want God's love to radiate out of us, mm -hmm. right? But a person is constantly keep doing stuff. Come on, no matter what you tell that person, right. Say it, it separates very friends. People that you are tight with, y'all start going this for this. Is the best you right. yeah. Because of your sinful nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? 
Let's go on. This is what God is just showing us balance. He's showing us how we ought to be. Ephesians 4 and 32. Mm -hmm. I'm just touching on it. Ephesians 4 and 32. Mm -hmm. Read 31 to about 30, 30, about 29. All 29. <laughs> Let's get out. Let's get out of it. Because it's all good. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. And we go. Let no corrupt communication proceed. Look, that's the second time you heard that, right? Well, mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Flowing with the words. Well, that should not come out your mouth. Proceed. Keep going. <clears throat> but that which is good to use of edifying, edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's what we're supposed to be doing. All words should have love in it. Keep going. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness. He's telling us again. Get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness. Let all bitterness uh -huh. And wrath. And anger. Uh -huh. And clamor. Uh -huh. And evil speaking. Uh -huh. Be well, put away from you. With, with all, all malice. Mm -hmm. Right now. It need to be gone. And be ye kind one to another. Mm -hmm. Tender hearted. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Even as God. For Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. God does it. He does it for, for, for Christ's sake. He forgives you. We forget that in the Old Testament, God was very judgmental at the point, right? He was killing people because he, he just got sick of it. He said, y'all going to die. But he gave us a period of grace to obtain grace. Amen. And we're playing around with it. Yes, we because are. we're not yes, responding we to the grace that he's given us. Yes, we are. The right way. That's right. We're not responding to it the right way. The right way is when he gives it to us, we su we're supposed to produce something out of that grace. Amen. You bless when you get it. But once you get it, God respects back to obedience to him. Well. To that grace he just gave you. You got to come back and take up your cross and follow him now. Back to obedience. Whatever he tells you to do, he's your shepherd. He's ordering your steps. He's guiding you to himself. But if you stop allowing him to guide you, guess what? You still way back there with somebody else to get closer and closer to God. Because they allowing God to order them and guide them and lead them into himself. He's trying to get us from here to him. And it takes a consistency of trust that he has to have in us. He, he already know we have a, a sinful nature. He said we drink iniquity like water. He know this. That's the nature he don't trust. But what he imparted in you, the Holy Ghost, he trusts that that is going to guide you to himself. But if you don't allow that Holy Spirit to activate, and you don't allow it to teach you and guide you the right way, right. you separate yourself from God, right. and you're not being led to him. You're being led away. Mm -hmm. This is why he wants you to get all of this out your spirit. Yes. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, all this stuff. We got to be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God forgive us. Right? Amen. Let's get on. Let's move on to uh, Hebrews 8 and 12. I was keep touching on Hebrews 8 and 12. Mm -hmm. It's scripture after scripture. I just want you to see it's a bunch of these. Right? I'm just touching on a few. I'm, it was so many. I'm like, man, mm -hmm. about almost 50, 60 verses on this. Mm -hmm. That means he really wants you to know this stuff. Keep going. Oh, I will be merciful. To their unrighteousness. This 8 and 12? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong thing. Spirit ain't right. It's all right, bro. It's all right. It's all right. All right, let's go. For I will be merciful. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. To their unrighteousness. And their sins. And their sins. Listen, God said he's going to be merciful to all these things, right? And we'll what? And we'll remember no more. He's telling you he's not going to remember it. When he forgives you, 
he don't remember it no more. Some of us, we, we say we forgive, but we constantly keep bringing up what somebody don't did. If you forgave me, let it go. Why do you keep tormenting me with something I did in the past? That is so true. Amen. Huh? As soon as you be having a good day, we, we eating, enjoying, the movie, and carrying on, and got some good buttery popcorn, and we sitting there. We need to talk. Now there you go. That's not. We need to talk about the women there. Huh? It's always these chats and stuff. Huh? Something I did, I immediately in my head, I go, man, I messed up. <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right. And they reminded you of something you don't need. Right. <laughs> I'm like, that was that was years ago. What are you talking about? Didn't you say you forgave me of that? Yeah, I did, but I, it just made me mad. <laughs> this is how we are, right? Huh? There's an old song all around the world. Same song. <laughs> Everybody do it. Right? <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Finish that out. You get it all? Yeah, well, yeah that's gone. We're that's going gone. to 13. We're going to 13. Let me see. Nah, uh, nah we move okay. on. Let's go to um, Psalms 103. Oh, we've got two more scriptures and I'm out of here. 103 and 12. Psalms 103 and 12. Psalms 103. Verse 12. Mm -mm. As far as the east is from the west, there it is. so far hath he removed our transgressions. This is how far God forgives you. As far as the east is from the west, he removed your transgression, your sin. Mm -hmm. He destroyed it. That far. Mm -hmm. it, don't, it never connects. It never produces anything. Mm -hmm. Because God don't remember it no more. And you can't even get that no, that's too far, right? As far as the east is from the west, yes. huh? That's a long way. That's a long way. So far has he, he removed our transgressions from us. That's how far God, when he forgives, it's that far, right? You can't, you can't really measure it for real, right? Let's go to Daniel 9 and 9. Daniel 9 and 9. And this is my last, and I'm, that's my time. Daniel 9 and 9. Daniel 9 and 9. Now go to 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. O Lord, to us belongeth the future mm -hmm. of face to our king, mm -hmm. to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Because we sinned against thee. Keep going. To the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. Belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. In other words, it's in God's hands to show you mercy and to show you forgiveness. It's not in ours. You know what I'm saying? Just like we have that same power to forgive somebody else, he has imparted that in us. I'm telling you, choose to forgive your brothers and your sisters so that you can grow. And y'all pray my strength. Amen. 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 Amen.